Hello, my name is uh, Dr. John Elmer, and I am an instructor in the College of Business and Accounting at Independence University. And I'm here for a short broadcast on business forecasting. So what is this? All businesses forecast, every organization forecasts, every kind of organization forecasts. And simply it's a way of predicting or estimating what the future is going to be. And the forecast is based on something that already happened. It's based on data from the past or perhaps present. It could be based on historical data, like the number of sales or the number of flowers that you sold or whatever it is that your business is in, the number of donations that you've rounded up, the number of students that have applied for your school. It also can contain opinions. You talk to some experts who have some expertise in something and they have an opinion that might affect your forecast. It looks at trends, things that have happened over and over and over again. And then it also takes into account variables that you know about. For instance, you may have a business that sells many things around the holidays and doesn't sell so much when it's not holiday time. So you would have a season, seasonable variable takes all those into account. Now, the reason we do a forecast is it helps us know when to order inventory. As I said, if you have a seasonal company, you order inventory later in the year rather than earlier in the year. It lets us know when to hire more employees because we can plan now for some of these things. It helps us to understand the seasonal peaks and valleys that happen in all businesses and throughout the course of the year when to launch a new product or service, what's best timing. It helps us figure out what our costs are going to be, what our profits are going to be, and it helps us address strategy. What do we need to do with strategy? Are we on the right path or do we need to change something? So why do we care about forecasting? Well, the example I have is this. Every year, scientists have to sit down and talk about flu shots. Now, what they're concerned about is which particular kind of flu is going to be the most common flu here in the United States this year. Then they have a vaccine, something to attack or something to control that or help those symptoms for that particular flu virus. So they have to forecast to find out what virus. They also then have to forecast, well, how many flu shots do we need to prepare? And when, they, when should they be ready? Because they are prepared in a laboratory somewhere, and then they're boxed up, and then they're sent out, and, you know, they may have to be refrigerated. I mean, there's a lot of planning going into just flu shots. So just as an example, uh, forecasting is all around you. Uh, you even do it, I'm sure, for your own budgeting. When you wake up in the morning, uh, you turn on the television or the radio, and you look for the weather forecast. So forecasting is all around us. Forecasting is done uh, in some kind of a time horizon. These are very common. <clears throat> some forecasts are uh, what we call short range. They're a forecast that's good up to a year. So you might sit down and figure out your budget for the year, for instance. Uh, purchasing departments use this particular um, um, forecast for uh, a lot because they need to schedule out when they're going to be purchasing things. You don't want to be buying things for your company if you don't have money in the bank, for instance. Job scheduling, I need to look ahead and see what's going on. Do I need to hire anybody? Do I need to schedule certain people? Do I need to bring contractors in, etc.? How about production? What's the production department going to have to do this year? What are the service department going to be working on this year? Some uh, forecasts are medium range, anywhere from three months to three years. Sales budgets are a lot like this. How many sales are we going to have in the next three months or over the next three years? And then every company has a long range plan, three years or more. And this is where strategy is set. This is what you're looking at for strategy. Um, if you're thinking about introducing a new service or a new product, if you're thinking about moving into a new facility, obviously that takes long range planning rather than short range planning. So there are three different time horizons for forecasts. And the realities of forecasts is they're rarely perfect. There are always some kind of unexpected events that come up. And so you, you do the best you can Organizations do the best you, they can. They try to come up with as close to budget as they possibly can, but there's always something unexpected. A forecast also assumes that the economy is stable. 
and the industry that you're in is stable, that there aren't any major changes that are going to happen. And also, if you are predicting a family of products, it's easier to predict than just one product. For instance, if you sold shoes, it's easier to say the total sales of all shoes is going to be this, and it's harder to say one particular kind of shoe, predict the sale of one particular kind of shoe, or as I put in here, it's easy pr to predict how many vegetables I'll sell. It's very hard to predict how much corn I'm going to sell this year. So if you're working with a family of products, you probably will have a more accurate prediction. So methods. There are two general methods that people use to forecast. Uh, there are dozens of methods available to you. It's easy to search on the internet for Google or Bing or even YouTube and see all of these different methods. But the most common ones are the ones that I'm going to talk about on this particular video. Uh, quantitative methods have to do with numbers. And you would choose to use a quantitative method when you have data. For instance, if you've been in business for a while, you would use quantitative because there's data that you can use. There are facts and figures that you can use to help you. Um, it, it involves math, um, and, and you need current technology in order to do this. And so a couple of quantitative um, methods are, are gonna, I'm going to go through. Um, <clears throat> quantitative methods look at a trend. So that's the very first thing. Is the trend of your organization up, down, stable? What's it doing? Are your sales year over year growing or are they declining? Um, what would make them grow? What would make them decline? Uh, trends, changes to the population, changes to te technology, culture, weather, all of these things you try to take into account when you are coming up with your forecast. And you try to use several years of data. Uh, you get a little more accurate forecast if you can go back in time more than just a year or two and uh, take a look at a longer trend. But when you're using a quantitative method, you're trying to see what the trend of your organization is and then predict what that trend is going to be based on some data, which makes perfect sense. So the two most common methods for smaller uh, companies, especially, we have something called the naive approach to data. Now, all this means is I'm going to assume that the demand for my product is the same next month as it was this month. For instance, in June, if I had $1,000 of sales, then in July, I'm going to predict I'm going to have $1,000 worth of sales. It's a good starting point for a forecast especially when you're first starting out and you don't have a lot of data, uh, it's a good starting point. You can use that month to month, year to year, week to week. Uh, I read somewhere that Walt Disney even does a daily uh, uh, forecast about what's going to happen in their park the next day. So it's a good starting point. If this happened in the past, it's going to happen in the future. That's very common. And the other one is called a moving averages approach. And I'm going to get into a little math, but it's not bad. Here on this chart that I have, you can see here's my months, and here are my sales. I have 10,000, 11,000, 14,000. What you do is you take the last three months, and, and depending on the method you're using, it could be six months, eight months, whatever it might be. I'm just using three. Take the last three months, and you figure out what is the average for the last three months. So you can see here 10 plus 11 plus 14 divided by three is 11.6. So my forecast for sales in April is 11.6. What's it going to be in May? Well, 11 and 14 and 11 are 36 divided by 3. So it's going to be May, it's going to be 12. Um, so you take the three months or three time periods that you choose, average it out, and that is your um, forecast for that particular month. Um, short term, this works very, very well. So between naive and moving averages, those are the basis for quite a number of the different kinds of numerical ways, of methods for figuring out a forecast. Qualitative methods are ones that don't involve so many figures. They involve more just talking to people. And there are four different ways of doing this. So the very first one is 
executive opinions. What you do is you sit down with the CEO of your company and the head of HR and the head of sales and the head of marketing and the head of production, etc. You sit down with all of these people, usually one-on-one, -on -one, but it could be in a committee too, and you simply ask them what they think is going to happen. The HR person, for instance, uh, spends all day long trying to figure out employees and trends in employees. And the HR person will have some ideas about the kinds of work that's available now and how much that will cost and how much it'll cost to hire people or how much it would cost to lay people off. The finance person would know all sorts of different finance things and, and understand the financials of your company. So you can see how this would work. You wind up with opinions from all your executives. You take all of that information and using that information, you build a forecast for your organization for the next year or whatever you're looking for. The second method is called the Delphi method. And here, you're gonna choose a panel of experts from many areas, and most of these experts are not going to be working at your company. And what you're going to do is you're going to send them out a survey about their opinion. So you send them a few questions, they answer it, you keep doing that back and forth through surveys, through interviews, through phone calls with an expert from all sorts of different areas until you have a consensus about what they think is going to happen in the economy or in finance or in production or in technology, what they think is going to be happening. And that helps you then create your forecast. A third way of doing it is simply to talk to your sales force. Now, Salesforce has a tendency to overestimate how much they're going to sell. And so be very careful when you're talking to your sales force. Try to get as accurate numbers as you possibly can. But let's face it, the sales force is the, probably the closest one to the customer that you have. And they probably understand if the customers are going to back off or if the customers are going to be interested to buy more. So there's valuable information there. And the fourth way of qualitative um, uh, forecasting is simply ask your customers what do they think is going to happen and how much do they think they're going to order this works especially well if you have uh, long relationships with customers if you are a supplier to different organizations you can talk to their organizations and get some idea about where they see the future and then you create your own forecast all right so in conclusion we talked about a couple of quantitative and some qualitative methods for doing a forecast, but you need to know that no single technique works in every situation. Every organization is going to choose a little bit different way of creating that forecast, something that works for them. You also should know that the time frame for your forecast affects your forecast. The shorter the time frame, probably the more accurate you're going to be. If you want to average what's going to happen, you want to forecast what's going to happen next month, you'll probably be more accurate than if you try to forecast what's going to happen in the next five years. And the last thing is, and I mentioned this before, how often should you do a forecast? Walt Disney, as I said, sits down with, the, uh, with a team of people that have been interviewing travel agents and customers in the park and customers in their hotel. When they, they interview thousands of people every day, Customers, employees, etc. they say, how did it go? They take those interviews, they find a consensus, and they say, tomorrow we can expect this. It's a weekend, so we can expect more people. It's a Monday, we can expect fewer people, etc. So they do it every day. I don't know how often you need to do it. I think most of us probably have a, a monthly budget that we follow personally. We know how much our monthly bills are going to be, and we can kind of forecast that the bills are going to be pretty much the same next month. So it's, it's most of us do month to month. Businesses, some will do month to month, some just year to year. All right, so I hope that helped. Thank you very much for listening and uh, have a wonderful day.